Wonderful, wonderful. Yes, Praise Lord. God. Fantastic, fantastic. Has everybody gotten... Like I promised to begin with, we are going to be doing communion to start off with, folks. So if you at home would like to get a couple, if you have some grape juice, great. If not, water will do. It's the representation of what we're doing today. Um, and a cracker or a piece of bread or, you know, a crumb, it doesn't matter. You can join us at home. First and foremost, I want to start off uh, to make sure that we are where we need to be when we take communion. Paul, in his writing, said to make sure that you are, your sins have been confessed and you've asked for, rep you've, uh, you've asked for repentance and that God is taking care of your sins. So we're going to do that first before we take communion. So if you would, please bow your heads. Close your eyes, bow your heads, and pray along with me. Dear Heavenly Father, I lift up all my sins, known and unknown, and I ask for forgiveness in this moment. Father, cleanse me. Jesus, what you did on the cross took care of everything. I proclaim these things in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 All right. So, before we take, let me go through some scripture here over our communion. Everybody got there that are here know how to use these. You make sure you pull off the top little tab first for the, the, uh, the bread, and then the bottom tab is for the grape juice. So, be careful not to pull them both off at once. I'm going to start in John 6, 53 through 58. So Jesus said again, I tell you the truth, unless you eat yes, the flesh of the Son of Man and drink His blood, you cannot have eternal life within you. But anyone who eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life. I will raise that person at the last day. For my flesh is true food, yes. and my blood is true drink. Yes, Anyone who eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me, and I in him. Yes. Thank you, Father. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. I live. I live because of the living Father who sent me. Yes, amen. In the same way, anyone who feeds on me will live because of me. Yes. Thank you, God. I am the true bread that came down from heaven. Anyone who eats this bread will not die as your ancestors did, but will live forever. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. Thank you. In Luke 22. 19, he says he took some bread and he gave thanks to God. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Then he broke it in pieces and gave it to the disciples, saying, This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Yes. After supper, he took another cup of wine and said, This cup is the new covenant between God and his people. Praise God for a new covenant. Yes, sir. No longer under law, but in his grace, in his mercy, covered by the blood of Jesus. An agreement confirmed with my blood, which is poured out as a sacrifice for you. I know if you've watched before, if you've been here before online, you see that I do get emotional during communion. Yes. But that's what it's about. It's about the remembrance of what he did for us. 
And as we take communion, it becomes so evident in my spirit what Jesus did for each and every one of us. The things that he did, he took our sorrows, he took our sins, he took all of those. He was beaten so severely, a crown of thorns was placed on his head, and he was the stripes. It actually, it actually translates to stripe because he had no flesh on his back for us. He did that for us. He went to the cross and suffered for each and every one of us, and that's why we take communion to remember what he did and what his blood and what his flesh mean to us. Let's open with a word of prayer, please. If you would, please bow your heads. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for sending your Son. Thank you for giving him to us as the perfect sacrifice. For the perfect sacrifice for our sins, things that we could never in a million lifetimes repay the things that we have done with our actions. It's, it's impossible. And the, the thousands of years of sacrificing animals for the, the, the remission of sin. Father, you took it all in one swipe and did away with it by giving us the perfect sacrifice. So our worship didn't have to be involving making sacrifices ourselves. Our worship could be just about worshiping you and understanding you and getting deeper in your word and in a better relationship, a deeper relationship, a wonderful relationship with you. Thank you, Father, for all of those things. Father, as I come up now, Ben is less, so you are more. Yes. I'm out of this. Holy Spirit, have your way. Do what you need to do. Say what you need to say. Use me as your mouthpiece only. Yes. This is you, Father. I pray all of these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen and amen. One more wipe of the eyes. <laughs> uh, now, I have realized the uh, clicker, please. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you. I realize that the... Uh, the message today is worshiping God. This is part one. But you have to realize this part one and part two are, are going to be foundational aspects of worshiping God. Because in order to worship God, we need to be in the right place. Yes, that's right. Okay? Yeah. We need to be where we need to be to worship Him. Amen. Okay? What we're going to be covering today is Isaiah 58. Isaiah 58. <clears throat> we are going to be covering, making sure my notes are correct here. Yep, verses 1 through 14. I'm going to read Isaiah 58, 1 through 14 first, and then we're going to break down these scriptures and the understanding of what. Isaiah is telling what God is telling this nation at this time. And so many things that we're going to read this morning and we're going to talk about in this evening's message are going to be very, very, very similar to what is going on in the world today. So I'm going to start in Isaiah 58. I'm reading from the Passion Translation, Isaiah 58, verse 1. Shout it loud and clear. Don't hold back. Let your voice be like a trumpet blast. Declare to my people their rebellion and to Jacob's tribes their sin. Yes, daily they seem to seek me, pretending that they delight to know my ways as though they were a nation that does what is right and had not rejected the law of their God. They asked me to show them the right way, acting as though we are eager to be close to me, close to God. They say, why is it then when that when we fasted, you did not see it? We starved ourselves and you didn't notice. Because on the day of your of you of you fast the day you fasted rather, you were seeking only your 
own desires. And you continue to exploit your workers. During your fast, you quarrel and fight with others and strike them with an angry fist. When you fast like that, your voice will not be heard on high. Do you think I'm impressed with that kind of fast? Is it just a day to starve your bodies, make others think, make others think, make others think you're humble? And lie down in sackcloth and ashes? Do you call that a fast? Do you think I, Yahweh, will be pleased with that? This is the kind of fast that I desire. Remove the heavy chains of oppression. Stop exploiting your workers. Set free the crushed and mistreated. Break off every yoke of bondage. Share your food with the hungry, provide for the homeless, and bring them into your home. Yes. Clothe the naked. Don't turn your back on your own flesh. Then your favor will bathe you in sunlight until you are like the dawn bursting through a dark night. Ooh, doesn't that sound beautiful? And then suddenly your healing will manifest. And you will see your righteousness march out before you. And the glory of Yahweh will protect you from all harm. When you cry out for help, he will say, I am here. If you banish every form of accusation, the scornful accusations, and vicious slander, and you offer yourself in compassion for the hunger, hungry, and relieve those in misery, then your dawning light will rise in the darkness and your gloom will turn into noonday splendor. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Yahweh will always guide you where to go and what to do. He will fill you with refreshment even when you are in a dry, difficult place. Mm. Mm. He will continually restore strength to you so you will flourish like a well-watered garden. And like an everlasting, trustworthy spring of blessing. Oh, praise God for that. Yes. Your people will build, rebuild long, deserted ruins. Building a new on foundations laid long before you. And you will be known as repairs of the cities and restorers of communities. If you stop pursuing your own desires on my holy day... And refrain from disregarding the Sabbath. If you call the Sabbath a delightful pleasure, and Yahweh's holy day is honor, a holy day honorable, if you honor it properly by not chasing your own desires, serving your own interests, and speaking empty words, then you will find the joyous bliss that comes from serving Yahweh. Mm. And I will cause you to prosper and be carried triumphantly over the high places of the land. You will enjoy the heritage of Jacob, your ancestor. Certainly, the mouth of Yahweh has spoken. Now, I realize that's a lot of scriptures. But, as you well know, I'm not a one-verse kind of preacher. Because when God reveals things to me, yes, if there's a single verse, he says, Ben, you need to preach over this verse. He's always going to instruct me to see what's before and what's after. Mm -hmm. I want to know the context of it. Yes. Okay? What we're talking about here is there was no way to say just one verse in this. We had to read all those verses to understand where these people were in that time, what they needed to do right, right now, and what was going to happen in the future if they did it. Mm -hmm. So let's look. We'll start here in verse 1. And it says, Shout it loud and clear. Don't hold back. Let your voice be like a trumpet blast. Declare it to my people, their rebellion, and to Jacob's tribes, their sins. He's talking specifically to Isaiah here as the prophet. Okay, But I want all of us to hear this. 
Okay? I want all of us to be bold in Christ. Amen. I want us all to sound like a trumpet for the glory of God. Amen. Because if we don't shout it out, who will? Mm -hmm. If we don't step up into the calling that he's given us, who will? Ooh, that's good. They'll do it. And it's not, I'm not comfortable doing that. That's not what we're called to do. We're called to go out and bring disciples, correct? correct? Amen. Yeah, that's yeah. what we're called to do. We have to show who God is in our voices, in our actions, yes. and in our bodies. Yes. Okay? We have to write the word of God. We have to write this word right here on our hearts every single day. Because what's on our hearts comes out our no. mouths. Yes. Verse 2. Yes, daily they seem to seek me, pretending that they delight to know my ways, as though they were a nation that does what is right and had not rejected the law of their God. They asked me to show them the right way, acting as though they were eager to be close to me. He's telling them that they are just going through the motions. They're going to church on Sunday because that's what I've always done. <laughs> I've always gone to church. My mom took me to church. We did it then. Go to, I'm going to sit here, turn the mind off for half an hour, an hour. Okay, let's get out of here. They were just going through the motions. Okay? We have to, as ministers and messengers of God, we cannot fail to point out the sins of God's people. And I'm not saying, you did this. No. No, 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 no. Preaching the word of God. Amen. Yes. Okay? Amen. This is what I'm talking about. That's right. We have to point out this yes. when we talk to somebody. Well, I think, no, 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 no. no. The word says That's right. there's a huge difference. That's right. Okay? Now, I'm not talking about you have something prophetic on yourself or someone individually. The Word says, take that person aside. That's right. okay? I'm not going to say, oh, I got a word for you, Leslie. You're doing this wrong. No, I can't. I'm not going to do that in the congregation. I'm going to do that one-to-one. -one. Right. God's laying something on my heart. So we have to make sure that we point out the sins of God's people and warn them of His judgment. Stop or we are not being faithful to what God's purpose is in our ministries. Mm, that's good. The song, the first song they sang, I, know I don't remember the name of the song, but our Father, everlasting Father, that the all-creating one, God Almighty, through your Holy Spirit, conceiving Jesus, the Son, Jesus our Savior. I believe in God our Father. I believe in Christ the Son. I believe in the Holy Spirit. Our God is three in one. Amen. I believe in the resurrection that I will rise again. I believe in the name of Jesus. Yes. Now the next two words we forget. Our judge. Yes. We forget about those words that are in. Oh yeah, I believe in God the Father. I believe in God the Son. Christ the Son, Holy Spirit, resurrection, yeah, yeah, yeah. We forget. He is our Savior. Yes. Jesus is our Savior right now. Yes. Okay? Jesus is, that's who He is. That's the position that He's in. He ascended into heaven. He's our Savior. He went to the cross for our sins. Thank you, God. Okay? When, and now we're not going over revelations today, but when that comes into effect, okay, now's the time of the Savior. When that comes, his role is judge. Right. Mm. Wow. Yes. Okay? You yeah. hearing me? You hearing me out there? Okay? He's our Savior right now. Praise God for what he did. Yes. Praise yes. God the Holy Spirit's on us. Mm -hmm. Praise God those things. We need to, we're going to need to listen to what we're saying today because right now he's the Savior. When we die and go to heaven and stand in judgment, he's going to be our judge. Oh, that's good. He is our defender. Yes. He suffered and crucified. Forgiveness is in you. Praise God. Praise God. He did those things. Yes. Descending into darkness, you rose in glorious life. 
forever seated high. Mm. He earned that place. He, earned, he did what he did, and he is our Savior. Amen. But he earned that place of judgment that he will be in at one point in our life. So we need to learn these foundational things of how to worship him correctly. Yes. Ooh, that's good. Whoops. The late reaction. <clears throat> Pardon me, one second. <clears throat> Verse 3, and they say, Why is it when we fasted you did not see it? We starved ourselves and you didn't seem to notice. And then what does he say back? Because on the day you fasted you were seeking your own desires and you continue to exploit your workers. This is the crux. This is the, the matter of today. The crux of the matter today is this. When we fast, when we pray, when we worship, we have to do it with the right heart. Yes. That's what he's telling them right now. You did these things, but you did it for your own show. You didn't do it for me. You know, in the next verse he talks about and I'm going to talk about the sackcloth and the ashes then. But I want you to understand, they were doing these things without love in their heart. Mm. They were doing things that looked good, keeping up with the Joneses. Mm. I go to church more than they do. Oh my goodness. Mm. You don't worry about yourself. Amen. <laughs> okay? Because if you're worrying about yourself and you're loving, you're not going to worry about what they're doing. That's right. They're going to see that that Jesus is in you. They're going to see and they're going to go, man, those folks are blessed. Amen. I know they're doing things right. I want, I want a life like that. Yes. Okay? We're going fasting and, and oh, I've yeah. been fasting for three days, Leslie. Oh, it's just horrible. Yeah. I'm fasting for the wrong reasons. Yeah. I'm not, and it says in the, and it says, don't pray like those that get up in the synagogue and they just go on and on and on. Their prayers are only answered what, what they're doing. You follow? The only glory they're getting is for what they're saying in that moment. During your fast, you quarrel and fight with others and strike them with an angry fist. What he's talking about is when they were in the fast or they were going to the synagogues, when they were doing these things, they'd sit there and they would argue over doctrine. They would argue over law. They were like, I'm right because I'm doing this. This is not, they, that's what they were doing in those times. They weren't there to worship God. They were to say, I'm smarter in God than you are. When you fast like that, your voice will not be heard on high. It's a huge warning, folks. Why is God not hearing my prayers? Wow. We need to look. And ben needs to pull out the mirror and say, what has been? God, show me, reveal to me what I need to work Amen. on right now, Father. Yes. Those are the things that I want to pray for. I want to be right in you. Yes. It says in verse 5, do not think I'm impressed with that kind of fast. It is just a day to starve your bodies. Make others think you are humble. Ooh. And lie down in sackcloth and ashes. Do you call that a fast? Do you think I, Yahweh, will be pleased with that? Yeah. What's the sackcloth and ashes? Well, in mourning, they would put the sackcloth on. Anybody here ever feel sackcloth? It's pretty rough. It's yeah. nasty. Yeah. I mean, it's itchy. I don't know how anybody would wear one of those things. But they would literally put those things on and they'd cover themselves with ashes so they would look pale. And they'd look like they were suffering more. And they'd walk around in public like that to get that attention. They weren't doing it to God. They were doing it, look how holy I am. Mm -hmm. Right? Without the right heart, what we do in worshiping God is it's very important we have to do it with the right heart. Amen. That's right. We have to do it with the right heart. Right. Fasting, praise and worship attendance, tithing, all of those things without the right heart. It says right here, it falls on deaf ears. Mm. We have to understand 
the things that we'd have to do. We started off today with communion, but what do we start first with? Confessing of our sins. Yes. And re being in repentance and yes. asking God to help us. Yes. I got a call this week from a young lady. Actually, a text, and then we talked. I thought all we had to do was believe in Jesus and go to heaven. That is first, number one. But devils and the devil and demons, they believe in Jesus who he is, right? Yeah. So, and are they going to heaven? No. 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 Okay? Because they refuse to get away from their pride of who they are. They've already been kicked out. Yeah. Okay? So just believing in Jesus is not going to get you into heaven. I know a lot of churches, and I grew up this way, once saved, always saved. Guys, you can step out of that right yeah. now. Okay? Because we need to make sure that when we are worshiping our Father, we are where we need to be. Amen. Where we need to be. Amen. And that includes asking for forgiveness from our Father. Yes. Being, having a repentant heart. Yes. Okay, What's a repentant heart? God, forgive me of my sins, but I'm going to go off and do them again. No, no, no. no, a repentant heart is, God, forgive me of my sins. Give me the strength. Holy Spirit, you are paraclete. Which means you are the comforter. You can comfort me when I have these fleshly desires. And you can strengthen me when I have these fleshly yes. desires. Give, I give that to you, Father. Yes. I give that to you. Yes. So when I look over there, nope. My God's stronger than that. Amen. Okay? But when we accept Jesus Christ as our personal Savior, we can't just stop reading the Bible there. Yeah. Grace is there for us. Okay? But we can get out of grace. That's our choice. Mercy is there for us. But we can get out of mercy. That's our choice. Yes. So when I talked to her, it was a revelation to her. Because just thinking that I believe in Jesus. Jesus is the Son of God. He's my Savior. And then going off and doing my own thing. No, that's not what the Word... That's not what this says. That's right, I understand it. What John 3, 16, God so loved the world that gave his only God's Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, him, but have everlasting life. Yes. But there's a lot more after that, folks. That's right. A lot more of that, of things that we need to make sure that we're doing to get deeper and more mature yes. in him. Yes. Amen. Amen. That's good. Verse 6 and 7. This is the kind of fast that I desire. Remove the heavy chains of oppression. Stop exploiting your workers. Set free the crushed and mistreated. Break off every yoke of bondage. Mm. Share your food with the hungry. Provide for the homeless and bring them into your home. Clothe the naked. Don't turn your back on your own flesh and blood. Who is wearing heavy train, chains of oppression today? Many of us, some of you watching, but the world in general is holding on. Guys, you understand that this will be a difficult thing for you to understand as God-fearing, God and God and all, and love God, and the, the people that I know that are here and watching are going to have a fine. The problem with the world is they love their demons more than then they love God. Mm. Oh, I won't change. I won't change in my life. But I can't stop this. Oh, this is what keeps me going. If I don't have that six pack every evening, I just I don't know what'll happen to me. Okay? If I don't sleep with every girl, a new girl every Saturday night after the bar closes, I won't be the kind of man I want to be. Come on. Come on. Who's wearing chains of oppression? Those are chains. The chains of oppression are sin. Yeah, yeah. Those are the things that are weighted on us. Yes. Those are the things that are crushing us. Those are the things that are mistreating us. Yes. We have to stop that. We have to get rid of those things. Yes. Stop exploiting your workers. It also translates into loose the ropes of the yoke. Mm -hmm. God really dealt with me on this particular point when I read that. I have an issue that I'm giving to God. I give it to God. I pray over it every single day. Yes, God, have the yoke, but I'm going to hang on to these 
these ropes here that hold on to the oxen. God, why are you going that way? I'm trying to go this. Hey, God, come on, God. I'm trying to pull these, 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 these oxen away over here. Where are you going? Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's easy to say. Hold the yoke for me, God. But if we hold the team and pull the team away, what chance does God have? Yeah. Okay? So we need to loose the ropes of the yoke. It also is talking about they were still, in this particular situation, they were not keeping the Sabbath day holy. They're talking about their workers. It says you're still uh, exploiting your workers. They'd go to church, they do their things on the Sabbath, but they'd have their whole crew out in the field working all day long. They weren't keeping the Sabbath holy. They were still making money. They were still doing their thing. So it applies to both things. We need to... On our calendar, if wherever, I don't have a calendar with me, but you just go down the line. On Sunday, everything, cross it out. Going to church. Yeah. Sunday, cross everything out. Going to church. Cross everything out. Going to praise and worship Him at church today. Yep. Just put that on your calendar. If you need a calendar to tell you those things, write it down on your calendar every Sunday. Keep His day holy. Amen. Amen. And it says right here, share your food with the hungry. What's the most important food that we can share with the hungry? That's right. That's right. You know, I ain't good answers here. This is the food that we need to share with the hungry. Who's hungry? The world yes. is hungry. Yes. Okay? Boyce and I were talking beforehand. He had a fantastic idea. I know the youth are doing it, memorizing verses and stuff like that. And we're going to start doing that with the adults in our Bible class as well. That's a fantastic idea. Yeah. How can we feed the world if we don't even know what this says? Yes. Yes. And if we say, and we put these things to memory, and we tattoo, yes, we, and we put them on our hearts, then when we see somebody, here's That's the verse right. for you. That's right. That's right. The Holy Spirit will convict somebody through the things that we say. That's right. Through His Word. That's right. The homeless. Who are the homeless? Homeless are anybody and everybody that doesn't have a home church to go to. Okay? I'm not talking, this is not the only church in town. There's other churches. Fantastic. But do you realize that the average person today who says they are, an act, they are an active attender of church, in their mind, that means once a month. Mm. That's statistically speaking, when somebody says, oh, I go to church. Well, if they say that, and they go, they say, I go all the time, that's actually once a month is what they're, they're talking about. That's statistically what it is today. Guys, we need to get away from that. God set that seventh day aside for us to be refreshed physically, yes. for us to be refreshed mentally, yes. and for us to be refreshed spiritually. Yes, God. That's what that day is for. Yes. So we need to find those without a home and show them what the love of God can do. Are we the hospital for the brokenhearted? Yes. yes. Are we? Yes. Okay. And who's brokenhearted? 99.9% .9 of the people you run into are brokenhearted. Okay? Yes. Show them love. Yes. Show them a place. Now, who needs a white, shiny robe of righteousness waiting for them in heaven? Everybody does. Yes. Everybody needs that. Yes. Lead them into a closer relationship with Jesus Christ. Yes. It's red, yellow, black, or white, as we know in the precious in his sight. Green. They're toothless. Living in a cardboard box. Or they say my other car is a Bugatti. Yeah. Okay. They have a ten thousand acre weekend toy ranch. I tuck my jeans in my boots. Anybody <laughs> know what that means? They own their cows. Yeah. It's a saying. Yeah. Cattlemen know what that is. If you're out there watching cattlemen, you're welcome too. Whether your boots are tucked, your jeans are tucked in, or they're on the outside, you're welcome, baby. Amen. They are all our flesh and blood. Amen. We came from one beginning, right? Yes. Adam and Eve, right? Yes. That means everybody is our flesh and blood. Yes. They all need a hospital for the broken heart. Amen. They all need a home. They all need to be fed. And they all need the living water that will never end. 
Amen. Praise yes. God. Now, if we do those things, then he starts saying, Then my favor will bathe you in sunlight until you are like a dawn bursting through a dark night. And then suddenly, your healing will manifest. You will see your righteousness march out before you and the glory of Yahweh will protect you from all harm. Showing God's justice, His mercy, His grace, and His love dawns a new bright day into our lives. Anybody ever, I mean, especially any of you have ever been deer hunting, you're out there in the stand. I mean, you can't see this far in front of your face. And then there's a little bit of light and everything looks like a deer. That stump over there, I know that stump's been there, but maybe today it's a deer. But when it gets light, you see everything. Boom! There is no doubt about what you see. God is promising us if we get ourselves right when we come into worship with Him and we get ourselves right into what we need to be for other people in Him, He will have a noonday sun above us all the time. And He talks about here, He talks about, I will protect you from all harm. And He says that suddenly your healing will manifest. It's not just talking about physical healing. It's talking about mental healing. Okay? I'm bipolar. No, you're not. Stop saying, I am this. This is an affliction. This is the devil. And I rebuke you in Jesus' name. And I will believe that until it's gone. Okay? If physical, I've got diabetes. I'm a diabetic. No. Stop saying, I am something that you are not made to be. Put that away from yourself. Say, God, I rebuke it in Jesus' name. And I know that you're going to heal me. And I'm going to wait on your perfect timing in that situation. And in your spirit. Spiritual healing. The most important out of all of these things. Spiritual healing. Being where we need to be in the relationship. That's so important. What does Jesus say? My new commandment is to love each other as I have loved you. As the Father has shown me, I've shown you. Because if you do that, you will remain my friend. If you love others like I've loved you, I will remain your friend. You are no longer my servants. Okay? The Jewish people, the chosen people, they had to bring sacrifices. There was a a point of servitude to that. Now, the sacrifice is taken care of. Jesus took care of that. Now we can have a friend in him in all things. Where do you find that? Start reading this. Yes. Praise God. Righteousness will march out in front of you. So I don't have to worry about where I'm going as long as I'm going in the direction that God's calling me. Because if I'm going that direction, he's already... Remember, he is omniscient he's omnipresent omnipresent means he was in the in the beginning he's now and he's at the end where we are right now is in this physical world we are in this moment it is 10 57 right now god is already at 11 o'clock and he's got his righteousness there waiting for you all you got to do is keep walking it's almost 11 oh here's his righteousness It's already waiting for me. That's what he promises us that he will do. Then Yahweh will answer you when you pray. Praise God for that. We have to live right, not just for show, not just for appearance, not just because that's the way I was raised, not because my cousin's a preacher. We're not doing those things for anybody else. We're doing them for God. And then when we pray, it says, then God, God, Yahweh, will answer you when you pray. When you cry out for help, he will say, I'm here. Right there. Thank you, God. And Jesus doesn't have to shout. God doesn't have to shout. The Holy Spirit doesn't have to shout. Why? Because they are 
right here. Right here beside us, right here inside of us, right here in front of us, right here on the other side. Oh, and there he is too. He's got me. 360. That's right. Okay? When you cry out for help, he will say, I am here. Thank you, God. We have to make a commitment to him and grow in our relationship with God. If you abandon, or banish rather, every form of oppression, the scornful accusations, and vicious slander, and if you offer yourselves in compassion for the hungry, we've talked about that, relieve those in misery, we've talked about that, then your dawning light will rise in the darkness. We've talked about that. And your gloom will turn into noonday splendor. Now, I want you to understand what scornful accusations. Scornful accusations are we're talking about somebody, usually behind their back. You know, we're like, eh, you know, Joni, she's this, and Joni, she's that, blah, blah, blah. It literally translates into pointing or extending the finger. Mm. When we speak that way, we do those things. Wow. Everybody knows what extending the finger is, right? When we're in traffic. Those things, we cannot do those things. Because when we do those things, we are speaking scornful accusations and offering vicious slander onto others. Mm. Yahweh will always guide you where to go and what to do. Woo, woo, whoa. Let me read that again. Yahweh will always guide you where to go and what to do. Amen. What a relief. I don't have to worry today. I don't have to worry about, oh, what's going to happen today if I put my foot on the floor. Oh, my goodness gracious, what's happening next? No. Yahweh will always guide you to where to go and what to do. Praise what God. a relief. Yes. Yes. If I live in his will, he's going to guide me yes. and he's going to tell me what I need to do. Yes. He will fill you with refreshment. Oh, praise God. Thank you, God. Speaking of. <clears throat> yes. Hmm. Mm. He will fill you with refreshment even when you are in a dry, difficult place. Mm. He will continually restore to you so you will flourish like a well-watered garden, like an overflowing, trustworthy spring of blessing. You know what jumped out of the page for me here and during this particular scripture, um, on this particular part of verse 9? The Holy Spirit is all over this. Yes. Right? Oh, well, what did we read last week? In this, before in John 15, 26. But when the comforter, counselor, helper, advocate, intercessor, strengthener, and standby comes, who I will send for, to you from the Father, the Spirit of truth who comes, proceeds from the Father, he himself will testify regarding me. Amen. We live in that. We're going to be watered. We're going to be fed. Praise We're going to have the conviction. We're going to have the guidance. I'm letting go of the yoke, and you can take the ropes too, God. That's right. I'll yeah. follow behind you because, man, walking behind in a plowed field is a whole lot easier than looking for cracks, looking for this. Oh, there's a red ant pal. You may have ever done that? Yeah. Oh, wouldn't you rather walk behind a plow that God's already looked directed you. Amen. God's already shown you the way to go. Yes. He's already taken, and he's leading you in the right path. Are we supposed to go over here? No, I got something better for you to be over here, Ben. Cool about me? Boom. Amen. That's what we need to do. That's right. We're getting close here, folks. Verse 12. <clears throat> Your people will build Long deserted runs, rebuild long deserted runs, building the new on foundations laid long before you. You'll be known as the repairers of the cities and the restorers of the communities. I also wanted to look at the Amplified Classic version of this, verse 12, 
and your ancient ruins shall be rebuilt. You shall raise up the foundations of buildings that have laid waste for many generations. And you shall be called repair of the breach, restore of streets to dwell in. Guys, the state of where we are as a nation right here rings out in this scripture over and for me. Okay? When we worship him correctly, when we are where we need to be correctly, he will use us to rebuild what this nation was built on in the first place. Praise God. You do realize, you guys at home might not even know this, this nation was built on his word. Amen. It was built in God we trust. Yes. Amen. The founding fathers, they all used this as a part of the documentations that they made to start this country. Okay? So we have ruins, foundations of buildings that have been laid waste for many generations, and that has happened, correct? Yeah. And then the repair of the breach. Does anybody understand what a breach is? Breach is a gap. Okay? Here we are. Well, God's over here. Where's the nation going? Where's, where are the people going? Yeah. There's a, a wider and wider gap. There's a wider and wider breach. If we get ourselves right, Amen. if we get where we need to be, Amen. guys, you watching at home, if we get where we need to be, we can be the facilitators in Jesus Christ, in God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit to bring the breach back. Amen. Praise God. Okay? Yes. yes. And you're saying, well, that's kind of difficult. That's a tall order. Paul did what he did, and he still had a thorn in his flesh. So don't think you've got to be perfect to do these things. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is we strive every day, just like Paul did. He had to get out. He put his pants on or his robe or whatever, one leg at a time, just like the rest of us, even with a thorn in his flesh. These were, and his thorn in the flesh were demonic attacks that happened over him every single day. Okay? If we just strive to be what this word says we should be, we can be the restorer, uh, repairs of cities, and restorers of communities. Amen. Whoops. Well, I don't know. I guess I'm messed up on those last two. It doesn't matter. We've got two more, two more verses. If verse 13 is in your notes. If you stop pursuing your own desires on my holy day and refrain from disregarding the Sabbath, if you call the Sabbath a delightful pleasure and Yahweh's holy day honorable, if you honor it properly by not chasing your own desires, serving your own interests, and speaking empty words. Guys, Sabbath is a day. Okay? But if you look up the original Hebrew, okay, the original Hebrew, it talks about a period of atonement. Yeah. A period of atonement is not necessarily just a day. It can be a week. And there are years of atonement also in the Hebrew calendar. Okay, So guys, when we go forward, we need to treat every day like his holy day. And on that seventh day, that actual Sabbath day, we need to refrain from our own selfish desires and focus on Him. Okay? That's why this is foundational to who, what we need to be in worshiping God. And then the last verse, verse 14, then you will find the joyous bliss that comes from serving Yahweh. Praise God. Praise God. I will cause you to prosper and be carried triumphantly over the high places of the land. Okay, so here's a mountain range, a valley, mountain range, valley, mountain range, valley, mountain range. Boop. 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 We're getting carried over the high places. We don't have to go down in here to the bottom of the well. We don't have to go down in our self-induced pits. Yes. When we are joyous, 
We will find the joyous bliss that comes from serving Him. I will cause you to prosper and carry you triumphantly over the high places yes. of the land. Yes. You will enjoy the heritage of Jacob, and He is all of us have that from Him. Remember, yep. Jacob is where Israel came from. That's why He's using the word Jacob. He's renamed Israel. He is kin to David, right? Okay. And then Jesus came from that lineage, right? And if we are all his brothers and sisters, the co-heirs, yes. okay, we're all brothers and sisters. We're the son of, of God, right? Mm -hmm. If that's the case, we too are his ancestors. And then it says, without a doubt, like even if you didn't, if you needed it or not, boom, certified. Mm -hmm. Certainly the mouth of Yahweh has spoken it. Now, I hope you have an opportunity, <clears throat> one, either to tune in or come this evening for the second part as we go over more of that and this foundational uh, aspects of worship. And then we're going to get into uh, a series on worshiping God. I appreciate you guys coming from home. I'd like for it, first and foremost, if you would, please bow your head and close your eyes at this time. Now is the time. There is no, uh, maybe I'll wait. There is no tomorrow. There is no next week. Now is the time to get our hearts right and to give our lives to Christ. Yes. Now is that time. Now is your opportunity. Whether you feel like you need to recommit your life to God, you've gotten away, you are that prodigal child, or you've never had a relationship with God, and now you know that is what is necessary. Please pray with me in this moment. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for sending your Son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross for our sins. He suffered for us. Thank you, Father. Jesus, thank you for everything that you've done. Thank you. You bled on the cross to give me living water and your blood that I consume, that it covers me. We plead the blood of Jesus right now. It covers me. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for offering your flesh that I can consume. And you can be in me, and I can be in you. Thank you, Jesus. I give you my sins. I give you myself. I give you my life. You are at the yoke. You are my Savior. In Jesus' name, amen. Please, if you would, continue to bow your heads and close your eyes. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this time that we had to worship you. Thank you for these words, this holy Bible, this Bible that is full. It is our owner's manual. Thank you for giving us your word to live by. For, Lord, this is just this is so important in our lives. Thank you. Lord, at this moment, I also pray for all of those here and watching that they will have a conviction by the Holy Spirit to get into your word. Questions are answered. Chains are broken. Oppression is loosed. All of these things happen in a relationship with you and the answers are all right here in your word today. Thank you, Father, for that. I lift everyone up watching and those that are here today. I lift them up in love. I lift them up in prayer. And I offer blessings over each and every one of them. In the name above all names. The name that every knee shall bow to and that every tongue shall confess of. I offer these things all and I say them all in Jesus name. Amen. Now, if you're watching at home and you don't have a Bible, please message us. Go and click up on the link. Go to our page. Message us, hey, I need a Bible. We will get back with you, and we will make sure you get a Bible in your hand. 
those of you that are uh, at home now, you're worshiping from home, and that you want to tithe here at Grace Point, you can go to our page. It has the ways to tithe electronically. Uh, otherwise, you know, if you have a home church or a place that you go to, make sure you do tithe. You put the tithe into the storehouse of your church. Thank you guys for joining us. We love you very much, and we will see you this evening.